This video is sponsored by Premium Sound, one of the UK's premier dealers located in Kensington, London, with an online store carrying a comprehensive inventory to cater for a variety of needs. For more details, click the link in the description. Apologies, a couple of things that I need to get out of the way. First, I'm struggling a little bit with my voice because I'm recovering from a nasty cold. And the other thing is that you're gonna hear quite a bit of background noise in the recording today. And that's because on the country estate in which we live, some of the trees are being felled today. Now, just to clarify, I do not own the country estate, just my property that resides within it. But some of the ash trees are suffering from a disease known as ash dieback and have had to come down. I'm a little sad because quite a few of them are over 150 years old, I suppose. I need to be philosophical and accept it's one of those circle of life things. To the business at hand, I'm here today to do, what do I call it? Yeah, the road less traveled. Draw your attention to a hi-fi brand that you probably never heard of or were likely to come across. The brand name sounds exotic, but Zinamps are actually designed and built in a workshop in Coulston, England. Founder Nick Creswell sells them directly from his website, which is linked in the description of this video. In my experience, some of these boutique brands can offer a bit of individuality and fabulous value for money, as long as they're produced by accomplished engineers. Spoiler, that is the case here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this video. What attracted me to the Zinamp was the design topology. Nick has coined the phrase simultaneous class A. It's a variation of the quad current dumping design, which I'll explain later. Let's be honest, you have to be a little bit careful when you're putting your money into some of these smaller brands. You don't know what level of support you can expect down the line, but the Zinamp brand has been going since 2017, and the founder has been designing amplifiers for well over 20 years, so you can take some comfort from that. Besides, the internals of the amplifier are pretty straightforward to service, and the parts can be replaced by any half-competent engineer. So, what's this simultaneous Class A business? And what kind of value does the Zinamp SSD represent? The Zinamp SSD retails directly off their website for £1,999. An optional moving magnet phono stage can be fitted for a mere £140, but the addition of moving coil will raise the price to £2,529. Styling can be described as artisan, with the brand logo placed as if it was an afterthought. Even though the unit is well constructed, some care needs to be taken when lifting the amp due to the edges of the heat sinks not being radiused. The Zinamp is machined out of chunky sheets of aluminium. Metric measurements are 430 by 78 by 335 millimeters. Imperial measurements being 16.9 by 3.1 by 13.1 inches. The SSD amp weighs about nine kilograms or 20 pounds. The Zinamp SSD will accept headphones via a 6.35 millimeter jack. There's a dial for input selection, toggle switches to engage a recording loop and select dynamic equalization. It works similar to a loudness control, but only boosts the bass and treble subtly. Another rotary dial can be used to adjust the amplifier gain, a useful feature to reduce hiss from high sensitive speakers. On the other side of the control, are more toggle switches to select A and B speaker terminals and one to power up the device. Overall, I'd prefer a more symmetrical layout, but I am a little OCD. Remote control is a £99 option not provided on this occasion. It's super convenient that the unit goes into standby if no signal is fed for 30 minutes and automatically powers up again as soon as the signal is detected. Having the two sets of speaker terminals above the IEC inlet seems nonsensical, even though the power cable shouldn't cause electrical interference with low impedance speaker connections, it makes fitting heavy duty banana plugs and spades onerous. There's plenty of space to move the IEC inlet to the centre and designer Nick Creswell needs to look at this in my opinion. I have no issue with the RCA connections though, they're of good quality and allow access to the recording loop for analog inputs and the phono stage. There's a reason why Class A amplifiers still represent the gold standard for sound quality for many audiophiles. They eliminate an unpleasant type of distortion that other amplifier topologies exhibit. Class B amplifiers have two transistors, each taking care of half the wave cycle. Distortion occurs due to a short delay introduced when the transistors switch on and off. 
And that's why most amplifiers to this day are still class AB by introducing a small amount of bias current they don't fully switch off and the transition from transistor to transistor becomes smoother but generally distortion will still increase as you drive the amplifier harder and it drifts further into class B. Single-ended class A amplifiers have one transistor taking care of the entire signal so no crossover distortion but the transistors need to be on all the time at full power generating a lot of heat. That makes them inefficient with comparatively low power outputs. To get the best out of them, you need high sensitivity speakers or a more powerful Class A amplifier. Cha-ching, cha-ching. The Zin Amp SSD actually has a dual output stage with a Class A B stage to deliver higher power, driven by a Class A stage that cleans up crossover distortion. Together, these two stages create a feed-forward error correction network. According to the manufacturer, the amp's total harmonic distortion only marginally increases from low volume at 0.008% to 0.01% at close to full power and most of its second order harmonic distortion at low frequencies which contributes to a warm sound. This topology is not completely new, Quad developed and had the patent for it in 1978 with the introduction of their 405 model power amplifier, they coined the term current dumping. The Zinamp SSD is a refinement of the quad design with a new name, Simultaneous Class A. It has a much bigger Class A section and an additional 50 milliamps of bias on the Class AB section, which makes it run a lot cooler than a pure Class A amplifier. Current dumping works like the power steering of a car. If not assisted, the steering would be very heavy when stationary, but by turning the wheel, fluid is dumped into the rack to help steer left or right. The Class A stage is connected to the speakers via a small resistance. The small voltage drop across that resistance is detected by the Class A B stage which dumps current into the speaker load. Quick overview of the internals. Let's start with the transformer. A 300VA troidal transformer encased in a pot. 300VA is a pretty decent sized transformer for the power rating of this amplifier which is 120 watts into eight ohms, encasing in a pot ensures that very little noise is radiated outside to the sensitive electronics, just as well because the preamplifier circuit's right next to it, which is why they've encased it in a pot. The preamplifier deals with very low level signals and is gonna be very sensitive to noise. Next to that is the phono stage, which is even more sensitive to noise because the signal there is even lower. That's why it's mounted further away from the transformer. I'll come to the power supply in a second, but let's have a look at one of the power amplifier modules, which is mounted here with four output devices mounted to the heatsink. They're all Toshiba devices, and I'm guessing, but I'm thinking the two smaller ones, which are on the outside, are the Class A section, and the two larger ones in the middle are the Class AB. It's exactly the same on the other side, but hard to spot because the power supply board runs underneath it and alongside, but you can make out the four output devices which are the same on the other side. And there's the power supply board, which has some other devices mounted to the heatsink as well. And the reason is because this amplifier has a fully regulated power supply, which is what name do with some of their amplifiers. And what that basically means is that under heavy load, it doesn't suffer from the same voltage sag as an unregulated power supply. It maintains its voltage better. And it's one of the reasons why you can get away with a little less filter capacitance. There are two larger electrolytic capacitors there from Cornell Dubliner, which is a good brand of capacitors, each rated at 4,700 microfarads. Now that is light. If this wasn't a regulated power supply, that would be very light. Normally you'd expect to see 10, 15, 20,000 microfarads per side. And you can get away with a little less because of the regulation, but I would like to see more because I just find that when you've got more filter capacitance, base transients always seem to be handled better. But I've got nothing else to complain about. It's well laid out design, fully discrete, fully through hole. None of those tiny surface mount devices. So it's easy to swap out boards and easy to repair this device and service it.
There's a bunch of reasons I like to bring your attention to small manufacturers. Championing the underdog sits nicely with my values. I like the idea that in this day and age, hi-fi products can still be produced by passionate enthusiasts. And these small companies don't have to design by consensus. They don't have to produce a product that's trying to have mass appeal. They just produce what they want to make. That's the case with the Zin Amp SSD. The objective was to produce an amplifier with a warm sound and the characteristics of a Class A amplifier without the low efficiency drawbacks. So let me unpick that. What I expect from a Class A amplifier is a liquid smooth mid-range due to the lack of crossover distortion and that's exactly what the Zin Amp SSD delivers. There's not even a glimmer of harshness. Also, due to the modest power output of many Class A amplifiers, like the Musical Fidelity A1, they tend to have a softness in the bass. When it comes to handling aggressive bass transients, there's no substitute for power. It's distortion really that can bleed through to the mid-range, and that's why many people associate a warm sound with Class A amplifiers, but it isn't typically a characteristic that high-powered Class A amplifiers exhibit. They have the power to keep bass lines under control and retain that liquid smooth mid-range. That kind of performance comes at a price though. I can't help but feel that this is a missed opportunity for the Zinamp SSD. It has a softness in the bass that I encountered with the Sugden A21 signature and the Musical Fidelity A1 for that matter. The Zinamp SSD is not a pure Class A amplifier. It's a small Class A amplifier driving a much bigger Class AB amplifier rated at 120 watts per channel into 8 ohms. I'm sure a bit more power supply filter capacitance would help to clean up the bass lines despite its heavily regulated power supply. Tighter bass would elevate the performance of this amplifier from very good to something exceptional. Bear in mind the Zin Amp has that fluid and rich mid-range that many Class A enthusiasts desire. It could be the best of both worlds, Class A mid-range with Class A B bass control. As it stands, my Exposure 2510 is a little bit more agile in the lower frequencies, expresses a little bit more timbral nuance through the mids, and has more of that airy quality in the highs. The exposure has greater detail and precision with less tonal coloration. The Zin Amp is distinctly warmer. It also has a wider and deeper soundstage whilst maintaining very good levels of stereo imaging. It's a very Sugden A21-esque in this regard, but I'm just making a general observation, not a detailed comparison. The A21 signature that I reviewed went back ages ago. Tube amps are known for their massive soundstaging abilities, and on this occasion, my Wilsonton R8 was equaled by the Zin Amp SSD. Despite me having upgraded tubes in all three stages, the dimensions of the sound laid out by these two amplifiers is about the same. As is the amount of detail delivery, where they vary is in tone. My current setup of the R8 is fairly well balanced when it comes to tonal delivery, and the Zin Amp, as you may have already guessed, is distinctly warmer. So where does that lead me? Well. We're not chasing the performance of my 3 grand Hegel H190 here, but the Zin Amp SSD has certainly given my two benchmark amplifiers below £2,000 a good run for their money. I have to commend Nick Creswell for making the phono stages optional. This is something that I wish more companies would do. Hegel. Anyway, £140 for a moving magnet phono stage is more than reasonable. Okay, so moving coil drives the cost up to £530, but this company already has a bit of a reputation for being a specialist phono stage brand. You may want to check out some of their other products on the website. You won't find any DACs there. Zinamp is very much rooted in the analog domain. It's worth mentioning that the variable gain control is pretty subtle, but I think it has enough variation to reduce hiss with high sensitivity speakers. Despite the amp being ultra quiet, even in a high gain setting. The EQ switch is also a useful addition. Dynamic lifts the bass and treble subtly, which I preferred with many tracks when I found the flat setting to be a little bit too mid-centric. The Zin Amp has good driving capability. Some stand mount speakers can be tricky to drive in the sense if you want the soundstage to open up and for them to deliver some dynamic punch, they need amplifiers with a bit of current. The Quadravella 1s are such speakers, at no point did I feel the Zin Amp SSD was struggling for power, even with the volume cranked up and average listening levels in excess of 80 decibels. 
Although I would be looking for an amplifier with a little bit more detail and tighter bass control to get the best out of the ultra revealing Ravellas. It was a similar story with my vintage product response 1SCs. I admired how vast the landscape was presented through the Zinamp and the velvety smoothness to the mid-range. But I'd like something with a bit more musical insight when it comes to producing fine timbre and crisper leading edges of notes if I was looking for a permanent solution for my Proax. The floor standing Darlene Rubicore 6s that are presently in for review also seem to be moderately difficult to drive. 88.5 dB sensitivity into a 4 ohm load with two 6.5 inch mid woofers to keep in check in a 2.5 way configuration. The Synergy Gods must have been blowing raspberries at this combination, warm cosy sounding speakers with a distinctly warm cosy sounding amplifier just took things too far in that direction. But the Zinamp SSD worked really well with the cool to fairly neutral sounding speakers in my arsenal. The Monitor Audio Silver 100s have the kind of resolution for £799 that will have you second guessing the price tag but I have to get the room positioning and the amplifier selection right to compensate for a lean mid-range. The Silver 100s with the Zin SSD was like cookies with cream. Literally the creaminess of the amplifier came through with a lot of the crispness of the speakers retained. I'm surprised this is not normally what you get when you've got speakers and amplifiers that sound so different. It's normally an averaging of the performance of the components. But this was close to synergy perfection, with a lot of the positive traits of the speakers and the amplifier coming right to the forefront, and the shortcomings pretty much easy to ignore. It was a very similar story with my Amphion Argon 1s at almost twice the price of the Monitor Audios. They offer a little bit more detail and refinement, but a very similar tonality, sitting on the cool side of neutral. It's like the Argon ones were different speakers when played through the Zinamp, a nice full sounding mid-range that many British monitors, many very good sounding British monitors wouldn't be ashamed of, and yet the pace, rhythm and timing that makes these speakers from Finland a little bit special. I'd love to hear how this amplifier would sound with KEF speakers and BMWs. I'm really happy to have put a bit of a spotlight on the Zinamp brand. The SSD amplifier offers something different to the norm, and the way it sounds is a bit special. A liquid rich mid-range with very good detail retrieval, all presented in a vast soundstage in these areas, is only matched by the very best tube and solid state Class A amplifiers I've heard in this market segment. This amp may not have the sound that everybody's chasing, but it's likely to win many fans. Yeah, I'd like to see a little tighter bass control and the chassis work improved, but those are the only two reasons why it's being pulled back from my top award. The Zinamp SSD gets a very, very highly recommended from this channel. My question for today is simple. What products from small brands would you like to see me cover? Please let me know in the comments section. I'm sure you know what to do by now. If you want to support me here and what I do, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Check me out on Patreon. There's a couple of consultancy tiers you can access there if you think I can help you on your audiophile journey. Also check out the ABA Club on Patreon, which has some great ways to interact with me and fellow patrons. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.